If you've been struggling with your forehand and it's not where you want it to be, you're not alone. I struggled with this side as well on the Pro Tour. I lost a lot of matches because my forehand let me down. And in today's video, I want to show you what the big problem was with my forehand, why it let me down, and what I'm doing now to focus on it to get better. I'm going to show you one thing you can do to improve your forehand today. My name is Jeff Salzenstein. I'm the founder of Tennis Evolution, eager and passionate about helping you with your forehand and the rest of your game. And in this video, it's going to be an awesome one because I got on the court, I started hitting balls, and I'm going to show you what's going on with the forehand, what's wrong with it, what could be better. And if you enjoy this video, make sure that you give us a thumbs up and you turn on your notifications, you subscribe to the channel, of course. And uh, let's jump into that lesson right now. Let's take a look at my forehand, and this is a version of the forehand that I had on the tour. So essentially, I had too big of a backswing. I did something that a lot of coaches will refer to breaking the plane. Uh, some people say it's a WTA forehand. I'm not going to make a distinction between WTA or ATP because there are a lot of women on the, on the tour that actually have a forehand where the racket stays on the same side of the body. So we're just going to talk about whether you break the plane and you have a big backswing or whether you don't, whether you keep the, the racket on the same side of the body. So if you see my prep here, this preparation is actually slightly different than how I did it on the tour. So on the tour, my racket was more vertical. I'm going to show you that in a, mo in a moment and my elbow was tucked in a little bit more. Now I'm working on getting the elbow out. But what I want to show is that even if you get your elbow out and away from you and the racket is angled like this, you can still break the plane. So you're going to see here, I'm in a pretty good position right here, but from this position, I would need to drop the racket down so that I don't break the plane. But now what you're going to see is you see how that racket gets behind my body there. I'm going to show a back view in a moment, but I just want you to take a look at that. That's the that's about what my backswing looked like on the tour. It wasn't extraordinarily big, but it also wasn't compact either. And this really hurt me on fast courts when the ball skid, when the ball skidded low. I actually, because of this backswing, I gravitated more to a buggy whip forehand because I could hit my buggy whip late and still make the shot. I could have had a better forehand if it was more compact and I had a better take back and a better uh, backswing. So now let's look at a back view of what this looks like. So now we have a back view here and again you can see my prep is pretty good. The elbow is away from the body, the racket is angled towards the net. Of course I've got my trusty slinger bag here. If you don't have a slinger bag I highly recommend you get it. It's a wonderful tool to work on your game. And what I want you to see here, let's go ahead and show it in, a, in fast motion. Let's play it in fast motion here. You know, that looks like a pretty good forehand, right? I absolutely ripped it. But if you slow it down and you pay closer atten attention to the technique, what you're going to see is everything looks good here, and this is when the racket needs to drop down and keep this tip of the racket on this side of the body. But you see how I kind of lay the wrist back, my wrist kind of drops back, and there's that little tail right there behind the body. It's not too bad, but it definitely could be more compact. And so, again, even though I'm ripping this ball, okay, that's a great forehand, and even though I have a great finish, and I'm a big, big stickler on catching the racket and, and finishing, that backswing is going to get me in trouble on faster balls. And so... You know, that's, that's something that I want to fix. Now, before we show the changes that I'm working on, where we're fixing this, this action from basically from right here, we're fixing how the racket moves and how the hand moves. Instead of laying this wrist back right here, we're going to see something differently. But again, first I want to show you an exaggerated version of a big backswing. So this is what I see with a lot of players that have too big of a backswing. And you're going to see again, see how my elbow's tucked in a little bit more and right away my racket goes vertical. Now Federer goes vertical with his racket, but he's able to drop the racket down and, and keep that hand and that racket on the same side of the body. But what you're going to see here, right about here, see how right there is when the racket should be dropping down this way and, it's, and it lays back right there. And so you can see how this is going to get really big in the back. 
and you see this with some players. And again, they still can rip the forehand. You're going to see here, I ripped that forehand, but it just is going to, this longer swing, this bigger backswing is going to create more issues, especially when you're playing, uh, when you're playing in a match when the ball is going faster, when you're tight. Uh, being able to time the ball, find your contact zone, even your return to serve is going to be impacted. So if possible, you want to see if you can get that shortened. And what I've been working on is a specific technique that I want to show you. And before I show you, let me show you a back view of this. So we've got the back view, got my slinger bag, and I want you to see the ball's coming out at a slow pace. See how the racket's vertical? See how the elbow's in a little bit more? And there's that layback of the wrist. There's that big backswing. You'll see, again, you'll see players with this back type of backswing, and they still win a lot of tennis matches. Again, you'll see this more on the women's tour than the men's tour. The men's tour, the, the players typically keep the racket on the same side of the body. Uh, and, and there's players that have won grand slams with this backswing. So if you like it and it works for you, you don't need to change. For me, I'm personally a little bit annoyed that I wasn't able to fix this as a professional player, that I got away with this and I actually got to top 100 in the world with that forehand. But it does explain why I really struggled on fast courts. I was actually better with my big serve. I was better on slower courts because I had time on my forehand. My swings were just too long uh, in the back. So that's, that's what I want you all to think about. Do, take a video of your forehand and do you have too big of a backswing over here? So now let's go ahead and look at the correction. All right, here's the new forehand or the, the forehand that's evolving because I'm continuing to look at it and see how I can improve it. So what I want you to see here is again, notice how I'm started, starting. So one thing you can see is that I'm actually keeping my hands a little bit more in front my elbow is away, and I'm not even thinking of taking the racket back behind me. I'm keeping it in front and to the side of my body. And when I get to this position right here, all I'm thinking about doing is dropping the racket. So now you can see, look at the difference in the wrist position. I've essentially dropped the hand, and then from right there, the wrist starts to lay back. Instead of having the wrist lay back in a higher position and getting the racket behind me, I'm... I'm making this move right here where I drop the hand down and I think of keeping my racket to the side of the body. You see how the racket hasn't even gone back yet. Whereas in the other videos, you would have seen the racket going back. And so then as I go to swing at the ball, the racket naturally goes behind me. And you can see that now I'm more behind my body or in line with my body instead of breaking the plane. Now, if you look at the contact and even the follow through, it's going to look the same as if I have the big backswing. But again, the whole intention is to make the backswing more compact. All right, here's the look from the back. And you can see, again, elbows away, racket is pointing this way, maybe even a little bit lower with my setup. That's what feels comfortable to me. And I'm just trying to keep my hand on, the, on this side of my body right here. I'm not letting my hand get behind me. And I'm thinking of really dropping the racket and almost keeping the racket in front of me. I know the racket is not in front of me, but that's what I need to think of right here. I need to keep the racket to the side or in front of my body. I can't let it go back further than I think. And it, it feels really short to me, but you can see it still gets back behind me. It's just the cool thing is it doesn't get, it doesn't break the plane. And all because I focus on getting my first move, which is very similar to my first move when I have a bigger backswing. And then from here, don't let the hand go back and then just drop the racket right there. Drop the racket right there and just let it go. And so that's what I've been working on on my forehand and it feels really nice. I don't know if I can do it in point play. It's a lot to think about, but certainly using the slinger bag, it can really help a lot. Now, if you enjoyed this video, okay, here's what I want you to do right now. Turn on your notifications, subscribe to the channel if you want to learn more about how you can develop your forehand and the rest of your game. Make sure you give us a thumbs up as well. And what I want you to focus on is getting that shorter backswing on the forehand if you like it. If you don't like it, just keep 
taking that big backswing. And before you go today, just know that I can help you with your forehand in the rest of your game. So if you click the link below in the description or somewhere in this video, I'm gonna give you three amateur uh, forehand mistakes, not serve mistakes, forehand mistakes that you could be making and we can help you get your forehand and the rest of the game, your game to the next level. I hope you enjoyed this video today and we'll see you at the next one.